Okay. The second type of double replacement reaction is the neutralization reaction. So this is continued from section 8.3. Okay, neutralization reaction is also a double replacement reaction. In a neutralization reaction, you have an acid and a base react to form water and an ionic salt. So you have some acid, okay, let's say hydrochloric acid, react with some base, let's say sodium hydroxide, and again, the cations and the anions switch partners. So the hydrogen from the acid and the hydroxide from the base Join together to form water, HOH is, we better know it as H2O. And the other product would be some ionic salt, in this case, sodium with chloride to form sodium chloride. Okay. Now, for our purposes, how do we define what an acid is? An acid, for our purposes right now, contains a hydrogen ion, okay? We're gonna see that this definition um, is limited and we'll learn a more expanded definition a little later on. A base contains the hydroxide ion. Again, this definition is limited and we'll learn a more, um, an expansive definition a little bit later on, okay? So when you have an acid, react with a base, and get the products of water and an ionic salt, okay? Uh, this is, you're going to see this demonstrated in one of the lab videos uh, for experiment nine. Okay, um, you'll see a neutralization reaction um, demonstrated there. Okay, uh, so let's just check for balancing. One hydrogen, one hydrogen, one chlorine, one chlorine, one sodium, one sodium, one hydroxide, one hydroxide. Now you may say, why did you split the hydrogens up? It's easier when you have the polyatomic ions to balance the polyatomic ions as units. But let's say you're a doubter, okay? Two hydrogens on the reactant side and one, two, two hydrogens on the product side. One chlorine, one chlorine, one sodium, one sodium, one oxygen, one oxygen. Okay, let's do another example of balancing an example of a neutralization reaction. Uh, let me find one that's a, uh, all right. Let's take phosphoric acid. Phosphoric acid is found in a lot of your soft drinks, especially Cokes and, and Pepsis, like that, those kind of drinks. So um, this is phosphoric acid. Okay, let's react phosphoric acid. Let's react that with sodium hydroxide. Okay. Now remember, it's, it's still a double replacement reaction. So the cation that's a hydrogen is going to combine with the anion that's hydroxide to give us water, HOH, H2O. And the other product is the result of the formation of sodium with phosphate to give us sodium phosphate. And I remember I told you previously that for Chem 110, you're not expected to predict products. But just in case you're wondering, you know, where am I getting these from? Okay, hydrogen's a plus one, phosphate has a minus three, sodium's plus one, and hydroxide's minus one. So these two ions come together to form water, sodium and phosphate come together to form sodium phosphate. 
Okay, now <clears throat> let's check that it's balanced. Okay, I'm gonna follow the ion approach because that's easier. We have two polyatomic ions. We have phosphate and we have hydroxide. All right, let's count the um, hydrogen ions, three hydrogen ions on the reactant side, but on the product side, if we're looking strictly at just the ions, we have one hydrogen here. So let's use a coefficient of three to balance out the hydrogen ions. Okay, so now we have three hydrogens. All right, now let's go to phosphate. We have one phosphate ion on the product, um, I'm sorry, on the reactant side, and on the product side, we have one phosphate as well. All right, so far, so good. Now let's go to sodium. We have one sodium on the reactant side, and on the product side, we have three sodiums. Okay, that subscript of three applies to sodium. We need to balance out the sodiums. We can only balance equations by using coefficients. You cannot just, if you're tempted to put a three right there, no, you can't do that. Only coefficients. So this three is now balancing out the sodiums. Okay, so now we have three sodiums. All right. So we did hydrogen, we did phosphate, we did sodium. Now we come to the hydroxide ion. This coefficient of three that we used to balance sodium also applies to hydroxide. So we have three hydroxide ions on the reactant side. This three here, which we initially used to balance out hydrogen, is also applicable to hydroxide on the product side, three hydroxides. Okay, equations balance. Let's just review. Three hydrogens, three hydrogens. I'm doing it by ions. One phosphate, one phosphate. Three sodiums, three sodiums. Three hydroxides, three hydroxides. Okay, it, it's easier when you have polyatomic ions to balance out the polyatomic ions. If you want to split everything apart, number of hydrogens, number of oxygens, it still balances out. Remember, we balance equations because law of conservation of mass, okay, matter is neither created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction. It just changes from one form to another. So if we were to tally out everything, if we, we stripped everything down into the elements, Three hydrogen plus three hydrogen, we have six hydrogens. Three hydrogens plus three hydrogens, six hydrogens. Oxygens, four plus three, seven oxygens. Three plus four, seven oxygens, right? But that way, a lot of times that gets people confused uh, when you're doing these reactions. If you learned it previously from another chemistry class to split everything up and you did well that way, all right, then keep it that way. But a lot of times with the double replacement reactions, if you have polyatomic ions, it's easier to keep them as units to balance them, okay? All right, the last type of reaction is the combustion reactions, okay? So the combustion reactions, they're usually the ones that give the most trouble to balance. So let's look at the combustion reaction. <clears throat> All right. So we had, this is the fifth type of reaction. Okay, first was combination synthesis, second was decomposition, third was single replacement, fourth was double replacement, and fifth type of chemical reaction that we're going to look at is combustion. Okay, this is still continued under section 8.3, continued, okay? This whole video is part of section 8.3. So in a combustion reaction, you have some compound that's burned, okay? It may not literally be burned as set on fire, but it's something that reacts with oxygen to exclusively produce carbon dioxide, water, and energy in the form of heat. these products. Okay. So
So the compound is usually, it could be a fuel, like a traditional fuel, like methane, which goes through the uh, piping in your house if your house is uh, supplied with heat from PGW. It could be methane, it could be propane, okay, octane in the, um, which is in gasoline. But also we, we eat food and the uh, molecules that are in the food, the carbohydrates, the fats, the proteins, okay, um, well, especially the carbohydrates, um, undergo combustion in our bodies, okay? So let's just look at some examples of combustion reactions and balance them, okay? So I'm gonna start off with some easy ones and then I'm gonna show you a technique that works for uh, the ones that are most difficult. Okay, so some compound, all right, okay. So let's just look first, methane I mentioned, okay? CH4, methane. Okay, this is in natural gas. Methane reacts with oxygen, okay, and produces carbon dioxide, water, and energy. Okay, now for our purposes, I'm just giving you the word energy. Chem 121 will have a value in uh, joules or kilojoules for the actual energy value, but I just want us to remember that energy is produced as a result of this reaction, okay? So how can you identify that it's a combustion reaction? Well, you have oxygen as a reactant and you have carbon dioxide, water, and energy as products, okay? That indicates a combustion reaction. What changes is what the other reactant is, okay? So let's balance this reaction here. One carbon, one carbon, four hydrogens, and over here we have two hydrogens. Okay, so we need to balance out hydrogen. Coefficient of two, all right, will give us four hydrogens on reactant and product side. Okay, let's look at oxygen. We have two oxygens on the reactant side. Now, on the product side, we have two oxygens coming from carbon dioxide, and we have two oxygens coming from water with the coefficient in front of it. So we have a total of four oxygens as is. We need to balance it, okay? So we put a two in front of the oxygen on the reactant side so that we now have a total of four oxygens on reactant and product side. This is what happens when this reaction occurs. Okay, you have one mole of methane reacting with two moles of oxygen to produce one mole of carbon dioxide, two moles of water, and energy as a product. Okay, now this is a pretty easy one to balance. All right. Let's do another example of a combustion reaction. All right. Now I know if I was teaching this in front of you right now, I'd say, anybody have any questions? And I'm sure some hands would go up. Um, so if you have questions when I'm doing these videos, make a note of them and make sure to send me an email uh, either through the regular email or through Canvas, because I have the comments disabled. I don't want internet trolls writing crazy stuff for these videos, okay? So this is, uh, you know, if you have questions, you know how to ask me, okay? And if you want me to call you, you know, explain something over the phone, and I could show you here on the board, you can, you can, we can arrange that too. Okay, let's do another example. Let's do combustion of propane. Okay, C3H8, propane. Okay, so, you know, you have a grill and you, uh, you're going to make burgers and hot dogs or whatever, and you have a gas grill. <clears throat> okay, propane is usually the fuel for that gas grill. Okay, propane reacts with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide, water, and energy. Okay, so the fuel can be, it's usually either a gas or a liquid. Oxygen's a gas. And these two products, carbon dioxide and water, are usually gases as well. Okay, but usually this is either a, a liquid or a gas. Okay. All right, let's balance it. Three carbons on the reactant side. And right now we only have one carbon on the product side. So we need to balance out the carbons. Put a coefficient of three to balance out the carbons. All right, we have eight hydrogens on the reactant side. But on the product side, we only have two hydrogens. So we need to balance that out. Put a four in front of the hydrogen. I'm sorry, put a four in front of 
water, okay, so it applies to hydrogen, and that will give us eight oxygen, um, sorry, eight hydrogens on the product side. So three carbons, three carbons, eight hydrogens, eight hydrogens. All right, so far so good. Now these wonderful oxygens. Two oxygens on the reactant side and on the product side, watch. We have oxygen in two products. We need to account for the oxygens in carbon dioxide and the oxygens in water. Okay, so three times two, we have six oxygens coming from right here, from carbon dioxide with its coefficient of three. And we have four oxygens coming from water. Okay, you say, how do we have four? Remember, this four applies to hydrogen and it applies to oxygen. Okay, its coefficient applies to everything in that chemical formula. Subscripts only apply to what directly comes in front. This two only applies to hydrogen. But this coefficient of four applies to um, hydrogen and oxygen. So six plus four, we have 10 oxygens on the product side, but on the reactant side, we only have two. So we need to use a coefficient of five. Okay, five times two is 10. Okay, remember I was saying that we need to remember our times tables for balance and equations. All right, so now it looks like we're good. Three carbons, three carbons, eight hydrogens, eight hydrogens, 10 oxygens, six plus four, 10 oxygens. Okay. Well, what do we do when it gets even more difficult? So I'm gonna show you an example of, of uh, as hard as it, it can get, okay? And we have to use, use a different technique. Let's look at, let me put it here, octane. Okay, octane is one of the many components in gasoline. Okay. Gasoline has about 500 different uh, components in it. Just one of them is octane. Octane, C8H18, reacts with oxygen. Okay, what does it give as a product? CO2, H2O, and energy. All right, we have eight carbons on the reactant side. Right now on the product side, we only have one carbon. So let's put an eight to balance out the carbons. Hydrogens, we have 18 on the reactant side. On the product side, we have two. Let's put a coefficient of nine because nine times two is 18. All right, so far so good. Two oxygens on the reactant side. Now on the product side, we have eight times two, which is 16, plus nine to give 25. All right, well, there's no times table that we can take two times something to give us 25. Two times 12 is 24, and two times 13 is 26. All right, so what are we gonna do? We have this 25 here. The technique that we use is we use a fraction to temporarily balance the equations. Now remember, we say we don't use fractions. We need the lowest set of whole number coefficients, but we need the fraction to help us out. So if we said to ourselves 25 over two times two, that would give us 25, okay? So we temporarily balance the oxygens by using a fraction. So if we did 25 halves over here, okay, because the twos will cancel out, that would give us 25 oxygens. But we cannot keep that fractional uh, coefficient. So to get rid of that fraction, we need to now multiply all of the existing coefficients by two. Okay, so I'm going to just erase the propane example, okay, and just so that we can see this down here, okay, let me just write a couple things, okay. A 
fractional coefficient. Then multiply all coefficients by the denominator of 2. to get the lowest set of whole number coefficients. Okay, so let's do that. Let me just write here the original, what we have so far. And we're not going to worry about the energy quantity for chem 110. So we're going to take this whole equation, okay, and apply a subscript to 2 to every reactant and every product. Okay. And this is as hard as it gets. This is like a bonus type question, okay? Something like this. All right. So 2 C8H18. Plus, if you take 2 times 25 halves, it gives you 25. Yields, okay, 2 times 8, 16 CO2. 2 times 9, 18 H2O. Okay, plus the energy quantity. Okay, we're not going to worry about the energy quantity. If we had a value in kilojoules listed there, then we would multiply that accordingly. We're not going to worry about that for this course. Let's count up now. 2 times 8. 16 carbons, 16 carbons on product side. Two times 18, 36 hydrogens. 18 times two, 36 hydrogens. Let's count the oxygens. 25 times two, 50 oxygens. On the product side, 16 times two is uh, 32, plus 18 gives us 50 oxygens, balanced. Okay, so the coefficients to balance this, and this is as hard as it gets, okay? This isn't the typical one you're going to see, all right? That's the, um, you know, the, the how to balance the most difficult ones, okay? All right, so I used examples of fuels. I used methane, I used propane, I used octane, but things like glucose, okay, undergo combustion in our bodies to provide fuel for our bodies to function, okay? So, I, you know, there, there's many things that can undergo combustion. All right, so this concludes chapter eight material. Okay, um, subsequent video will show its select topics in chapter nine. We're not going to cover all of chapter nine in its entirety, just some concepts in chapter nine, and that'll be a separate video. Okay, all right.